Hello everybody, this is Dreaming of Back for round one of Group E. We're getting Group E underway here. In my opinion, the most open group out of all the groups. I really can't call who will top it. Right, and let's have a look at our fight card for this session, shall we? So we do have our bronze medalist from last year, Man, taking on the newcomer, Keontae. Although Keontae did take part in the Champions Tournament. We have a clash of two complete newcomers in Prison Bow and Jurassic Expert. We have two, um, I'd say veterans at this point in Emmy JP, JP10 and Arctic Warriors going at it. And all that before our main event of this session, Aaron Plays, taking on the group stage specialist Kai John Cooper. Right, let's get on with our first matchup, which is Emmy JP10 taking on Arctic Warriors. Okie dokie, in the red corner for Emmy JP10, we have got Ulti Rhymus. MEJP10 are constantly improving combatant in my tournaments. I mean, let's just remember where they start, you know, their first tournament where they didn't win a match. I don't even think they got a point. They just got knocked out of the group stage. Then they got to the semis. Like, the improvement from them is incredible. Right, in the blue corner for Arctic Warriors, we have Kendrasaurus. Arctic Warriors seems to get out of the group stage, but then just completely falls away at the... Uh, doing a knockout round, so I'm sure they'll be looking to improve on that. Right, we are on the beach field, which favours wind types. No blitz types or anything to worry about, so let's get started. And let's, let's hope this will be a good match. Ooh, a good start from the Ulti Rhinus. It's a power drain. Ulti Rhinus does have the type advantage over Kentosaurus here, so it's not really a good matchup for Arctic Warriors. Oh, oh my god, not, not more button spamming. <laughs> it's a good start from MEGE10. Getting them power drains, sapping the life away from the Kentrosaurus. Four. Okay, that's a tie. Arctic Warriors getting landing some damage at least. Oh, that's going to be it for Kentrosaurus. And let's be honest, it it really didn't get going. And that is an early lead for MEJP10. And that's a massive metal win. Badoosh. Oh, wow. Wasted it. Okay, coming in next for Arctic Warriors. They, we have got the Mega Raptor. A Mega Raptor with terrain advantage. And Arctic Warriors is going to need that terrain advantage to get back in this match. Not only does it have terrain advantage, it does have type advantage over the Ulti Rhinus. Which again, Emmy's good. Arctic Warriors is gonna need to get back in this contest. I mean, whatever happened in, in, in this match, I fully expect both of these two to get out of this group. I mean, I do fancy it. Okay, wow, well, not much damage done here. Come on, Arctic Warriors, get going, man. <laughs> We need to get an actual hit, instead of one with courtesy of Terrain Advantage. Because this Ulti Rhinus is mopping the floor so far with Arctic Warriors. Okay, there we go. It's an actual hit. But again, you know, any you don't mind that. This is Mega Raptor's weakest hit. It's another tie. Ooh, big power drain. Big light recovery. Ulti Rhinus, the very mute Ulti Rhinus. Oh, look at this. <laughs> Shucky. Wow, that power drain is really causing Arctic Warriors problems. And then, how many power drains are you going to give Arctic Warriors? Freaking MEGP10, sorry. <laughs> Oh, poor Arctic Warrior is going to be sick of the sight of this move at the end of this match. Especially if Emmy wins. Um, okay. It, well, at least it's a different hit, but it all adds down to one thing. Arctic Warriors is in trouble. And Emmy JP10 is well on top. Right, for Arctic Warriors' third dino, we got Sukumimus. And Sukumimus is going to have to pull his finger out here. Mega Raptor, even with a tight advantage, couldn't finish off Ulti Rhinus, even with terrain advantage. As well, MEJP10 has been dominant so far. Oh, 
Oh, fuck. <laughs> I hate these kind of matches. It's so annoying. Please don't be rock. Please. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, I'm genuinely sorry. <laughs> Maybe I could implement the rule for next year. This is going to be paper. Okay, okay, scissors. Come on, at least kill the ulti Rhinus. Okay. Okay. There's a water sword. I think like the first hit Arctic Warriors has gone in this match. Oh, fuck. It still didn't kill it. It still didn't kill it. Oh, my. Oh, dear. Oh, oh, wow. Um... Well, and this is really ugly. You, you never want to see these kinds of matches, but there's always that risk with random number generator, and yeah, it's... Not much to say there, but uh, yeah, it's our first 3-0 of the tournament. And I'm praying and hoping it's the last. But Ulti Rhinus really wiped the floor with them. <laughs> Right, um, I think less said about that matchup, the better. I, I, that was going to be the main event as well. I'm glad I didn't pick that one now. <laughs> right, on to our next matchup. Okie dokie, in the red corner, representing Marn, we got a Sorrow Faganax. Now, interesting thing about this Faganax is it doesn't have any fire moves, which I think, given its amazingly high attack power, I think could definitely benefit. Look at that technique. 1,050. Wow, I think Marn might be onto something here. Well, they're going to benefit him here because in the blue corner, for Kionde, we got a Spinosaurus heroic type. Now, normally the Spino would have type advantage here, but the Sorophagnox doesn't have any super moves, like I said, so I think it's a genius play by Marn. I really do. Right, we're on the arid field, so only Earth Dinosaurs get terrain advantage here. And I don't think either of our guys have one. Okay, good start there from uh, Kionte. Decent damage, the Spino is heroic type, so that paper will hit hard. As will this crit as well. A oh no, not another freaking... Okay, it's early days, it's early days. <laughs> No need to worry and whine yet. But it's a good start from Kionte. It's high. Man yet to get going so far. Another tie, and that will be all she wrote for Sorrow Faganax. Okay, now, coming in next for Man with type advantage, is Taurosaurus. And this Taurosaurus does hit hard, and Man's gonna need it to hit hard to get back in this contest. Because it has been all Chionte so far. And Spinosaurus is not letting up yet. That's, that's a tie. Oh, there's another crit. But again, the type dis disadvantage is going to limit the damage. Oh, here it comes. It's a shockwave. That's not good for Mon. And this has been a really slow start by our bronze medalists. Oh, it's a, it's a, it's a tragic sphere. And the heroic type bonus is going to increase the damage. Mon is really struggling in this match. Okay, that's consecutive shockwave removal, so... The shockwave rule will not apply here, so moves will be generated like normal. Oh, big break for Marmi. Big crit from Taurosaurus. Booch, a stomping hammer. I, this might be lethal. And it bloody well is. Attack bo boost activated in here. Marm definitely catching a lucky break, but... Coming in next for Kionte, it is Super Tank with Terrain Advantage, so you know what that means. 
it means that Tank will get the next hit, and it will kill the Taurosaurus. So despite that fortunate break for Man, Kionte will be back on top. The await the mode on three, I believe. So let's play out the terrain advantage real quick. And yeah, down goes Taurosaurus, but it did take out the spine. Right, coming in for Man's third dino, we have got a Patasaurus. Basically, the bootleg Brontekins. Interesting choice again, no secret moves. I don't know if that's going to pay off yet. Because Man is playing catch up in this matchup. Because Ankyonti is relatively comfortable. Ooh, but Man does get the next hit. A tie bomb to come as well. But remember, Super Tank does have the Awaken mode to rely on. Okay, Crystal Crusher there. Right, that's one. Oh, big crit from Man. Man coming back into this match. Another tie bomb. Ooh, that's a tie. That'll do for Man. And Tank will go down. And all of a sudden, Man coming back into this contest. But coming in third. For Keontae, it is the T-Rex. And this T-Rex hits really hard. It is attack type as well. And it's got death fire. And I actually think, you know, a lot of teams have T-Rex in first. I think Keontae is the only one that has it in third. So it's a very it's a very good finish to have as a finisher. And will it work for Keontae? Yeah. Ooh, that's a tie. But ties will suit the Apatosaurus. It is built for that. That's another tie. Look at that. The tie defense effect paying off there. And actually, it's put Man in the lead. Ooh, another big crit. A tiebreaker as well. And a tie bomb. Well, this strategy is certainly paying off, and I think a tie will kill the T-Rex. And Keontae didn't get the death fire triggered. Big chance for Man. Is he going to turn this around? Yes, he is. And it's a come from behind victory for Man. Things look good for Keontae early on, but our bronze medalist from last year re-establishing control over this match and getting it done with a Patasaurus. And unfortunately, to add insult to injury for Keontae, no losing bonus point either. That was a good matchup, wasn't it? Right, on to our third match of this session. Okie dokie, in the red corner, representing Prison Bow, the newcomer making their official debut, we have got Paris Dinotector. Well, this is going to be a very interesting match between our two newcomers. Both of them have armoured dinosaurs. Uh, we're on the beach field, which favours wind dinosaurs. And uh, neither of us, neither of these guys have wind types. Right, in the blue corner for Jurassic Experts, we have got Ampelosaurus. <laughs> Jurassic Experts looking team looking pretty decent. I, I like the look of their team. And you know, in group E, a more open group, these two definitely have a chance to get out of this group. And an early win here would be helpful. Ooh, is Paris getting the first hit on the board? That Dino Tech the bar will fill up as well, which could be crucial in this match. Armour could play a big role in who wins and who loses. And so far, it is Paris on top. This is a good start from Prison Boat. It's a tie. Ooh, but Amplosaurus gives Jurassic Experts their first shot of the match. Emerald Garden getting triggered there. Guess four. Ooh, that's a tight. 
the Emerald Garden opportunity is wasted. But what isn't wasted is this Paris because it is landing shots and look at this. Nature's blessing coming in as well as does the Dino Tector. Dino Tector on! Ooh, this could be a, well, the ultimate Gleaf will be wasted if it gets hit on Amplosaurus, but if Prison Bow can somehow preserve it for the Eocarc area, massive opportunity here. Okay, he gets a hit, but it is wasted, like I said. So, I think, if you're Jurassic Experts, I think you'll take this. You know, take the, the Amplosaurus loss on the chin. The ultimate leaf is gone for now. And you can use Eocarcaria to build up your own armor as well. So, I think Jurassic Experts will be happy with that. Right, coming in next for them, we've got Omega Eocarcaria. You know, we've seen Armored Dinosaurs pull it back to teams in this tournament already, so... This is this is where I think this match is going to be won. And so far, Paris does have a decent lead. So Jurassic Expert's got a bit of work to do. There's a tie. And I should note, the Dino Tector will fill up quicker than the Omega Armor because... Paris has already got it off, but that's a big shot from Eocarcaria. It's a burning dash. He's pretty much gone all Goma with this dinosaur. Except for not having Flare Sword for some reason. And look at the damage done there. Exactly what Jurassic Experts needed. Can't afford to get hit by an ultimate leaf again. Oh, but that's a crit. And yes, Dino Tectors do increase their attack power after using the ultimate move, so more damage was done there. Ooh. Okay, that's great. I gotta get ready here. This Crimson Flame is gonna level things up for Jurassic Experts. And the Paris Tector is gonna go down. But it definitely did its work. Oh, nice and easy. <laughs> Hmm, an interesting turn of events here. Eocarcaria did take a beating. But I think Jurassic Experts will be pleased to see the Paris Tector go down. Right, coming in next for Prism Bow, we have got a Yangchungosaurus. Hmm, we're at an interest. This is an intriguing contest so far between these two newcomers. But I think despite having the health lead, I do feel like Jurassic Experts could turn the screw here with the Omega armor if he gets that far. Oh, that's another tie. Ties off fill up the bar. Ooh, that's a big hit. It's another Crimson Flame. Yes, you'd have to say die. Jurassic Experts does have the match's momentum at the minute. And right now, Prism Bow um, feeding off scraps in terms of terms of hits. I think if they can kill this Neocarcaria before it gets to the Omega armor, then yes, I think Prism Bow will probably go on to win this match. But uh, how many times have I been right in these tournaments? Oh, that's a tie. Oh, that's another big hit. That's going to be Yangchungosaurus going down. And, more importantly, the Omega armor is going to be going to be activated. Provided I don't botch this. Which I shouldn't. Here we go. <laughs> I should ban these moves, to be honest. I don't like doing them. But, uh, but that would be no fun, would it? Right, I better get the code ready. Right, coming in next for Prison Bow. Who, after a good start, is in a bit of trouble here. But they do have Lex Oversaurus, and they're gonna need it to hit quick. Ideally, with a crit.
but now I would definitely say Jurassic Experts is on top. Right, we're going to enter the code now. Guess it's all on this now, isn't it? Okay, well, going for the crit. Good move. Oh, that's a tie. Okay, survived one. Oh, and he gets the hit. Prince of Oak gets the hit. But it's not lethal. Oh, no. Out costly. It's not lethal. Okay, there's the tie. Massive sigh of relief from Prison Bow. The Omega Eocar Carrier fails to get the Omega Phoenix. <sighs> and breathe. Right, coming in next for Jurassic Experts, we got Super Sorrow Pelter. The Awaken Mode could be key here. In the clash of two earth shaking beasts. Well, not really, these two are quite small. Well, Sorrow Pelter was a decent size, but uh, Lexosaurus was on the smaller side, we should say. Ooh, wow, this is this is going right down to the wire. This is what we want to see. Not one-sided massacres like the first match. And if Lexosaurus getting that hit is a Venom fan. Ooh. Just when I thought Jurassic Experts was on top, Prison Bow strikes back. Right, that's one. But remember, that Awaken Mode can change everything. Ooh, Sorrow Pelter strikes back with the next hit there. That's twice. Ooh, another hit, and you know what's coming next. It is Awake Wick time. Can Jurassic Experts close this out? And he can! There's the crit! Unfortunately for for Prison Bow, despite the really good, intense match, they are coming away empty-handed. And it is Jurassic Experts' victory. And wow, they have to work for it. Promising signs from both of our newcomers, putting on impressive displays. Right then, let's move on to our main event of this session, shall we? Right, let's get this main event on the road. Ooh, interesting. Okay, coming in, in the red corner, for Aaron Plays, we have got a Mataburasaurus. Hmm, I think if you're Kaijon Koopa, you like this field. The Super Torvosaurus in third will have terrain advantage. Which could be key in this matchup. Right, in the blue corner, representing Kaijon Koopa, we got Penticeratops. Last year, Kaijon had the highest points total in the group stage, won all five of their group stage matches, and in fact, has never lost in the group stage. So, not the easiest start if you're Aaron plays, but hey, all those records got to end eventually, haven't they? And that is a really good start for Aaron plays. It's a big foot assault. Aaron plays putting his big boot on this match early on. The Pentaceratops is like, uh, uh, what's that noise? What's that noise? Uh, bleh. Not bad, but Metamorosaurus isn't the hardest hitting dino in this tournament. But it is starting strong. Kaijon Kuba yet to get going in this match. Okay, that's a tie. Oh, Pentaceratops gets the next hit on the board. A Thunder Bazooka. Kaijon Cooper striking back with their first shot of the match. And yeah, look at the difference in damage there. Massive difference. Okay, not that massive, but you know, there is a decent difference here. But it is Mutaburasaurus getting the KO. A stomping hammer. Going to stomp the Pentaceratops into the floor and give Aaron Plays an early lead. Hmm. This could be a problem for Kaijon here because coming in next is Euoplocephalus. It'll have tight disadvantage, so any hits Aaron Plays gets here 
will be a big bonus to them. So for Kaijon here, they need to kill this Mataburasaurus and need to kill it quick. But we've, we've seen these situations before, you know, even start one on one and then the other guy just gets loads of hits and goes 2 nil up. Oh, that could be a big, that's a big crit from you, Oplocephalus there. Almost killing it. A tile duet. Oh, even better, they get the all attack. Kajon coming back into this contest and leveling the score. We have to say, this is a good showing from Aaron Plays so far. Right. It's Earth against Earth now because coming in next for Aaron Plays, we've got Ankylosaurus. Now, I will say, Euoplocephalus' attacks are more balanced, but Ankylosaurus does have the hardest hitting move in this matchup. But, can Aaron Plays take advantage of it? Ooh, not like that. Euoprocephalus putting Kaijon in the lead for the first time in this match. And well, it was a good start from Aaron Plays, but they're, they're kind of reeling a bit. And look at this, another mole attack. Aaron Plays... Desperate to get that crit off, but Kaijong is having none of it. Hmm. Okay, Aaron plays finally learnt his lesson and decided to go for rock just to get a hit on the board to steady the ship. Right. That's a crit. Oh, and he does get the crit this time. And look at that! We're back to level pecking. Oh, that's a tie. Three. Ooh, but it's Kaijon getting the crit. It's a quake saber. It's kind of wasted, but this crit will put Kaijon into the lead. Okie dokie, coming in for Aaron Plays is third dino. As you can see, it is Spiny. Spiny Dino Tactor. Will we see Dino Tactor in this match? Um, I'm going to say no. On the basis of I... Because it'll have type advantage over the Super Torvosaurus. I don't think it'll get enough hits in on the Torvosaurus to get to the armor before killing it. Of course, you got to get past the Octocephalus first. And the Torvosaurus will have terrain advantage if it comes in. And, well, it is coming in because Spiny Tector gets the hit there. It's a Venom Fan. And, well, we are back all square. Wow, this has been a really intense match so far. Just when, you know, Aaron play started strong and then Kaijong came back into it. And now we're level packing and both of our teams are down to their last dinos. Right, for Kaijon, we have got Super Torvosaurus with Turing Advantage. It will get off a rock hit. Which uh, won't do much damage. <laughs> Especially with type disadvantage. But any hit is crucial in such a tight game as this. But I will say, Aaron plays, I feel, has the edge now. Boosh. Right, that's one. Awaken mode on three, by the way. Ooh, that's a tie. No potion panics or heat eruptions. Ooh, Spiny gets the next hit. It's a Venom Fang. Torvosaurus is going to take a beat. Yes, go away notifications. Is going to take a beat in here. Oh, that's going to be a costly Venom Fang, I feel. That actually guarantees... Aaron plays at least a losing bonus point should they lose this match. Oh, that's another tie, but that Venom Fang is going to chip away at Torvosaurus. Ooh, Kaijon gets that crucial hit. And hello, we got a Volcano Burst. And this has to be the tightest match we've had so far in this tournament. Look at this. And it's awakening time. Oh, this is, this is what it's all about. 
guess it all's up it's all on this. Oh it's Aaron please gets the next hit! How big could this hit be? I think with the awakened mode, Torvasaurus will survive, but it's a chance missed for Kai. And now it is Dino Tector time! And Aaron plays is well in control now. Well, you have to say, the pendulum has definitely swung Aaron Plays' way here. And is Kai John going to taste defeat in the group stage for the first time? Oh, he gets the hit! Oh, look at this! Look how tight it is! Is this going to be a draw? Oh my god, it's a draw! Both of our guys have bit the dust in an epic main event classic. Aaron Plays and Kai John Cooper has end will be sharing the spoils. Wow! Now that was a main event. And that will that is our first draw of the tournament. That that was insane. That was absolutely mental. Like God. Pop a like for the matches in this session. Apart from the first one, which was just awful. <laughs> that, wow. Group E is delivering, definitely. Right, we're going to have a look at the table and we're going to end the session. Well, that was mental, wasn't it? We have NEJP10 top of the table there with five points. You get two bonus points because they won 3 0. Jurassic Experts and Marn getting off to winning starts here. And then we have Kaijon and Aaron plays on one point after the epic draw and we have these three poor saps at the bottom and wow if that's a sign of things to come in group e then i think group e could be the most exciting group of the tournament and yep that's going to end this session here so i hope you enjoyed and till next time ta-ta